All right. <clears throat> Redid it. Redid it two days ago. Ask a question, made a comment, a channel comment, ask a question. I have an important question. How do I become sovereign and rid myself of my false name given on my license, which is in all caps, making me a corporation or entity belonging to the United States? Thank you, brother, for all your diligent study and administering of the truth. Well, we give thanks and praise to Yah and his Moshiach, to Jesus Christos, Getach, in the name of Ketamawi Hala Selassie. Your question is a very important question. However, in one, one YouTube vlog or blog or posting like this, we can't even go into even half the issues. The only thing we can do is point you in the direction that you need to go in in order to get accurate information. You need to get accurate information about about the matrix, about this whole system. It's, a, it's, a, it's a basically it's a system like the Matrix in the Matrix movie and like a computer program in a sense. And if you want to set up your own web pages or website, you have to learn the code. You have to learn that information. Now, it may seem like a lot, but it's not really a lot once you begin off with certain basic principles. So the first thing I would say is to acquire accurate information. You need to acquire accurate information. Because when you ask about becoming sovereign, well, one is born as a child of God. One is born sovereign. So as Jah's child, one is sovereign. One is a citizen of the kingdom of the king of kings as Jah's child. But then one has to go through the adoption. So we're speaking of a spiritual level. We're speaking of true Christianity. We're speaking of the good news of his majesty and his Christ in order for one to have that confidence and that knowledge and that surety that one is a child of God and one can respond through the Holy Spirit to any sort of situation. Now, I don't even know how to even sum this up in, 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 in kind of brief relief, really, because these kind of issues are involved. I don't want to make it seem to a person like, you know, like it's too much. You know, you know like it's like it's impossible to know. But the first thing is our spiritual birth. The first thing is our spiritual new birth. is to be born again in spirit and in truth. Because I can't really speak to those who are outside, outside of, outside of the temple, outside of the tabernacle. I can't really speak to them. I can't really give them any guidance in the way of the King of Kings, which this teaching, the teaching of his Imperial Majesty, Lions of Society, and the work that we, Rasi, Adinos, Teferi, and our brothers and sisters are doing here, is his Imperial Majesty's work and his will. So if one is not in his will, we're not here to try to convince one to be in his will, but to proclaim to one the good news and the verity or the truth of that. The first thing that you need to do is to acquire accurate information. You need to acquire accurate information because even though your question, I can see your question was sincere, by how you presented the question, there were some things that were lacking when you said your false name that was given on your license. It wasn't your license that gave you your false name. It was lack of knowledge and ignorance of self and us being in this, if you're one of those who are of this captivity in here in the Americas and the Caribbean, Therefore, you come through the whole Deuteronomy chapter 28. So you have to understand that that false name, how we lost our identity, how we, how we lost our way as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. So that's really the first, the first level because there's certain things you can do legally, you understand? But when you look at the mountain of Babylonian laws and, and, and other kind of tricks within the whole system to try to go through it their way according to their system still keeps you in their system. So the first thing one has to do is to declare their spiritual sovereignty. Therefore the steps within the system going through the system are less because of the two-edged sword because of the word of truth. That's why we say that knowledge, accurate information and knowledge is important. But when you mention the license, let's take um, something that we've taught on previously and that you should make a note of, something called an adhesion contract. You need to learn what an 
adhesion contract is because an adhesion contract and adhesion contracts are unlawful and can be revoked or rescinded. In actuality, an adhesion contract, such as a driver's license, it robs you of your natural God-given rights and replaces them with, quote, government-granted privileges. So having anybody who has a license or any type of documentation they had to get through the state or the local or the government or the federal government, whatever like that, basically those are adhesion contracts and government-granted privileges which basically now because you have it whether you received it by coerce through duress or whether in ignorance or lack of knowledge still that's what it becomes legally speaking so take the right to travel for example when you apply for a driver's license obviously you had to apply for a driver's license or your parents applied with you if you was not of age or just about of age or something like that for a driver's license when this happened you were unknowingly waiving your natural, your natural rights to travel. So when we as a Rastafari, all right, ones would hear a lot of um, a lot of proclamation and speaking and talk of I and I natural, Rastafari I and I is natural. You understand the natural man. But many didn't understand what natural man really meant when Rastafari and Rastafarians said that they are natural. And I and I should deal natural. You understand that it was nature and natural. On the legal level of this Babylonian slavery matrix, it's interesting what natural rights really are. So you need to learn of natural rights. I hope you're taking notes. Learn of your natural rights. What are natural rights vis-a-vis -vis, um, artificial rights? Or when, what's the difference between a natural person and, and an artificial person? So when you apply for a driver's license, for example, you are unknowingly waiving your natural rights to travel and you enter into what is known as an adhesion contract, quote, for hire, end quote, for hire. And this is codified, and you can look this up for yourself. Don't take my word for it, but get the proof, get the information, document it, put it in a portfolio, because you need the paperwork. You know what I'm saying? You need the paperwork. The only paperwork most of us have is the paperwork that we're given or that we, that we apply for waiving many of our rights from the federal, the state, or the local so-called government, local so-called um, post-slavery um, authorities. Anyway, the for hire codified, the adhesion contract that is known as for hire, which is linked with the driver's license, is codified at Title 18 U.S.C. 31. So you can look it up, Title 18 U.S.C. 31. Now, the... In, Implementing regulation is found at 49, the 49th Code of the Federal Regulations of the CFR, Part 391. Now, plain and simply, because all that's kind of some legal mumbo jumbo, but you do need to get, the, you should get the information and have that document as part of a portfolio. Because, like we said, we live in a paper sea. You understand? We live under, in a sense, a paper sea. You know, we're the sea of papers. We always need documentation. How many times, whatever you need to do, you need some sort of paper. You understand? Some sort of paper one needs. Both kinds of paper. Both paper, which comes from the federal government documentation, and also the paper to even do business or buy or sell or whatever like that. It's all under the basic mark of the beast. So you need that documentation. But plain and simply, wrapping this part of it up, that the driver's license, it places the, quote, driver, end quote, in, quote, traffic, end quote. That may seem obvious, right? That the driver's license places the, quote, driver in, quote, traffic. But this is defined in Black Laws Dictionary as commerce. If you look it up online or even acquire a copy or go to the library where the lives are buried and get a Black Laws Dictionary, notice that they call it Black. Black Law. What do you think it's called Black Law for? Oh, they'll tell you it's the name of the person. Anyway, Black Laws Dictionary as commerce. So when you get a driver's license and you become the driver, you are now placed in traffic and under the law and defined in all reputable and, and, and operational law dictionaries, that is defined as commerce. So once you get behind the wheel of a car with a driver's license and you start driving in traffic, you are engaging 
in commerce. That's why police can ask you for your driver's license, whether you have the right to engage in commerce. So when you speak about ridding yourself of the false name, the false name wasn't given by the driver's license, but you or someone gave it for you, gave that false name, and that false name actually was given. You see, the false name part of it is part of our God-given rights and how we as the once lost but now found beta is Rael, lost our God-given rights.